How many of y'all know he's a great God? Come on, I said, how many know that he's a great God? Oh, I can't hear y'all. How many you know that he's a great God? If you serve a great God, come on, stand up to your feet and help us sing this song.
two or three people around you that's in your area and say, he's a great God. He's a great God.
to have some exciting worshipers in the house. Master, Savior, us. Like the fragrance. find it, say amen. amen. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Amen. If it's not asking too much, and your neighbor is not the unfriendly type, <laughs> turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Mine, mine is to stay in the game. Amen. If that one didn't want to talk to you, find another baby and say, neighbor, my aim 
is to stay in the game. Thank you so kindly, ushers and nurses. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the Bible talks about the believer being a person who endures. If you are a Bible student, I believe you will find sufficient evidence in your perusal of the scriptures that will support what I have just said, and that is that believers are supposed to be endurers. The Lord tells us, the Lord teaches us, the Lord talks to us about being people of faith, believers, followers of Jesus Christ, the Lord's disciples, and how important and imperative it is for us to be the kind of believer who endures. To endure means to suffer without yielding. To endure means to go through something without giving up or giving out. To endure something means no pain, no gain. And so I'm willing to take the pain because ultimately my goal is gain. As a believer, you must understand how important it is for you to grow to the place and to the point and to being the kind of person who endures. Can I stick a pen right there and tell you? that everything is not going to be comfortable for you always. Did I, did I say something right there? It ain't going to be sweet and, you understand, without bumps and bruises and rocks and hills and mountains. There are times in life when you got to go through a little something, something. But as a believer, you got to learn how to be like a Timex watch, to take a licking and keep on ticking. Come on, nerve somebody on your own. Say, I feel like Timex. I feel like I feel like Timex. I feel I feel like Timex because I am the kind of Christian who can take a licking and still keep on ticking. And when the devil know you can't take much, the devil will always be on your trail. Always knocking on your door. Are y'all hearing me here? We must learn how to suffer without yielding. The Bible talks about the believer being a person who perseveres. Can you say that with me? Perseveres. The Bible teaches me I've got to learn how to endure, but not only endure something, but learn how to persevere, and persevere means to keep going, even though i got to endure what I'm going through. See, some people are going to shut down when trouble comes, but God don't want you to shut down. God wants you to learn how to keep on pushing. Folk from the old school know that song. Keep on pushing, keep on pushing, keep on pushing. You've got to learn how to persevere while you are enduring. Per 
perseverance is steady persistence in a course of action. Perseverance means to maintain in spite of difficulty. When it ain't happening right then, keep on. When it look like it's not working out right, keep on. When it look like you're not achieving the level of success you hope to achieve by then, keep on. And so it is, perseverance is my willingness to maintain the right course in spite of whatever difficulty I'm having right now. Yes, I'm going to help somebody here today. You listen to me. God wants you to learn how to hang in there. If hanging in there is the right thing to do. And sometimes we are hanging in on things that ain't right. But what is right, you got to learn how to persevere. You got to learn how to endure. But endurance and perseverance are not really my focal word. My focal word is really the word resilience. The person who endures and the person who perseveres must practice resilience. When you have resilience, you can endure. When you have resilience, you can persevere. Somebody say thank you, Reverend, for the formula to my success. I want to succeed. I want to make it. I want to go higher. I want to do better. I want to do more. I want to be in God's will. And I want to live out God's purpose for my life. But here's what I want to tell you. If you are not a resilient person, you will not be a persevering person. And if you're not a resilient person, you will not be an enduring person. You need to learn how to have resilience. Okay, Reverend, help me out. What is resilience? Resilience is having the ability to bounce back from something. Plain and simple. Resilience is having the ability to bounce back from something. I want to ask you a question. I guess I'll go ahead since it's on my mind. Is there anybody in here today who had to bounce back from some things in your life? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can bring it on in. Is there anybody who's trying to figure out how to bounce back from some stuff right now? Because the real truth is, it ain't just about stuff I've had to bounce back from yesterday. I'm dealing with some stuff i got to learn how to bounce back from right now. Can I hit somebody here right now? I'm still reflecting on days past and gone when all I had was that old bozo the cloud blowed up balloon and it was my punching bag and every time I hit him and knocked him down, he bounced Somebody today say, I got some bozo in me. I got some helium in me. I got something inside of me that no matter how hard I'm hit, I tell you what, I'm going to bounce back. 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 Resilience is having the ability to bounce back. From whatever you have been going through. For those of you whose names have been called this morning. That's going through a season of grief. Resilience is having the ability to bounce back. It's not about your getting over this season of your life. But it's about what you have and what you do to get through this season of your life. Can somebody help me preach right here? Find a neighbor in your neighbor say, listen, some stuff is just hard to get over. But everything, God can get you through. I know I'm right about it here. When you are resilient, 
You can bounce back from your tears when you are resilient. You can bounce back from your trials and your troubles and your temptation when you are resilient. Help me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Robert. You can bounce back from your tribulation. I can always count on Robert. He's paying attention to me. Lord bless you. Thank you, sir. Bounce back, bounce back. That's what resilience is. That no matter how I am affected or effected, Know this, that I will bounce back. Help me, Lord Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. Resilience is believing and behaving in spite of circumstances. Believing and behaving in spite of the circumstances. Resilience says, I've got to still believe. And I must also behave no matter what it looks like. Yes. Because my belief and my behavior go together in terms of, of getting my blessing. Yes. If I believe right yes, and behave right, yes. I'll get the blessing that I have a right to possess yes. because of my resilience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Resilience is having an our attitude right. despite handicaps are human hindrances. Right. When you are a resilient person, you possess an attitude in spite of or despite whatever handicap you have right. or any human hindrances. Right. I was watching TV a few days ago only to my amazement to discover that there is a young black man yeah. with no particular emphasis on his color. There was a young black man who was seated in a wheelchair right. who had no functional use of the lower extremities of his body. Right. In other words, from his neck down, he was a handicapped. But from his shoulders up, he was able to paint unbelievable portraits. You ain't hearing me here. In other words, what he couldn't do with his hands, what he couldn't do with his feet, he was able to get a paintbrush in between his teeth and his lips and paint portraits that would literally blow your mind. And you'd be looking at that, that picture saying, oh, I wonder who did this. Had to be some great person, some great artist, somebody with tremendous skill, only to discover that the man who did it is a man who doesn't have the faculties that you have. In other words, his resilience is evidence in spite of his handicap. I don't know what your handicap may be. And all handicaps are not physical. Uh, but know this, if you got a mental handicap, if you got an emotional handicap, if you got a psychological handicap, if you got a spiritual handicap, what you got to know is uh, that if you develop an attitude of resilience, you can rise above the level of your handicap. It doesn't matter whether it's 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 you physically right. or if it is people who hinder you right. from fulfilling your potential. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ooh, I think I'll stick my pen right there. Because some of you have got great potential. Yeah. Oh yes, you've got great potential. God has poured something in you. God has put something in you. God has purposed you to operate at another level, but you are letting somebody hinder you from living up to your potential. Somebody who ain't about nothing. Somebody who ain't trying to be nothing. Do nothing. Want nothing. Keeping you from fulfilling your potential. Yeah. You need to know that there are times when 
your resilience will be tested by people who don't want you to go to another level and they sure ain't trying to go to one themselves. Listen, my brothers and sisters, listen, Paul says, be ye steadfast. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. Unmoved. Yes. Always abounding yeah. in the work of the Lord. Yeah. Paul is advocating Christian stability. Yeah. Right. Paul is advocating Christian stability. Right. God wants you and I to be stable. Yeah.
When you know what God has called you to do, when you know what God has planned for you to do, when you know what God wants you to be participating in doing, you can be resilient because you know your purpose. When you don't know your purpose, it's hard to be resilient. Lord have mercy. Knowing my purpose helps keep me focused on God's word, God's will, and God's way. If you want to help yourself and help the kingdom of God, then know God's purpose for your life. And when you know God's purpose for your life, here's what you will discover, that knowing my purpose can help me to be resilient and to bounce back no matter what comes against me. Mm, mm, mm. Here's number two. Here's number two. Resilient people don't have loser's limp. Okay, some of y'all are not into the sports world. Let me tell you what loser's limp is. Loser's limp is when you conveniently catch a cramp. <laughs> you, 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 you ain't running like you're supposed to run no how. Look like you're not going to win. So what you do is uh, you fake a cramp and you come in to my... Man, if it wasn't for this crap, if it wasn't for this Charlie Hoss, if it wasn't for this arthritis, if it wasn't for this rumor too, come on here somebody. People who are resilient are people who are not always coming around with a loser's limp. Man, you better be glad, you better be glad I ain't got the right shoes on. Back in the day, Tim, when I used to be balling and on the court, guys would even talk about, you know, I ain't got the right tennis shoes on. If I had the right tennis shoes, my game would be better. Well, if you knew you were going to play in the game, why you didn't put on the right shoes in there? You ain't in here with this loser's limp. Resilient people are people who, if you will, stop making excuses. If you're going to go forward in 2019, stop being a person who's always making some kind of excuse about why you can't be here, why you can't do this, why you can't give that, why you can't show up, why you can't celebrate when we're praising God. Get rid of your lip, your lip! But, but, but you, you know what, you know what, Pastor? I would sing in the choir, but I don't, I don't know what I sing. Alto, soprano, tenor, bass. Just, just tell the musician. Listen, I want to sing. Can you help me to know where I'm supposed to be singing? At? Can you help teach me, train me, get me with somebody who, so I can learn how to operate within that section of the, of the choir that complements my voice and my voice complements the choir. Stop making excuses about why you can't do something. Help me, Lord. I know I picked on the choir, but you know you spread that butter all over this place. Get rid of your loser's limp in your marriage. Get rid of your loser's limp in your education. Get rid of your loser's limp, help me, Jesus, on your job. Always oh, got some kind of excuse. Loser's limp is for people who could do better, but they take the easy way out. Blame it on some kind of something yes. that really ain't about nothing. Help me. Amazes me how people can do a whole lot of other stuff. Amen. But when it comes to God in the church, yeah. look like there's always some reason right. why they can't do it. Amen. Help me, Lord Jesus. Yes, who, 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 who's the number one person on the scene now? In relationship to R and B and to and the music, who, who number one? Huh? Well, I don't know if R and Kelly in one way. 
I know he's number one in another way called his chain. His chain has done went up more and more. With all of these downloads he done got now that he's on the download. Your coach haven't did yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so if it is, if it is, if it is an R. Kelly, help me, Lord Jesus. I need to tell you, my brothers and sisters, we've got to learn how to stop making excuses. Because I promise you, if your number one person in the entertainment industry was to come here and say, I'm going to be in Wheatley Heights for three nights only, I bet you all three nights. If the house ain't full, you gonna be here. But somebody said, you know he right. You know he right. You know he right. And we can have choir rehearsal on a Tuesday night, Bible study on a Wednesday night. And somebody said, you know, I can't come back tonight because I was just here last night. <laughs> but they drive the same car to work five days a week. <laughs> Hold me up, Holy Ghost. If they got a hot date, they're going to drive the same car to get to where the day is. Don't y'all make me say something ugly. Or you know, if it was a BC, it didn't matter what day or something. Some of y'all heard what I said. You find a way to get there. Oh, that mercy. Well, my daddy gave me keys to that 1968 Fury. I'd either ride my bicycle or catch the bus to get to where I wanted to go. Because I was resilient. Are y'all hearing me here? To be resilient is a choice. Do you not know that when Caleb was 85 years old and they came into the land of promise, Joshua was dividing up the land. Yeah. Caleb said, I know I'm 85 years old, but there's some resilience in me. There's some bounce back in me. There's some I'm going on in me. So give me this mountain. I know it's rough. I know it's rugged. I know there's a lot of timber. I know it's going to take a whole lot of work. I know I'm going to have to put in some long and late hours. But because of what's in me, I'm ready for my mountain. There's a resilience in me. Even when I'm 85 years old. Now ask your neighbor, how old are you? Come on, come on, how old are you? Why are you dropping out so early? Why are you dropping off so early? Why are you quitting so early? Why are you hanging it up so early? Why are you throwing in the towel so early? Caleb was 85 years old. and said, give me this mountain. Because even in my old age, I'm still resilient. And I plan on finishing strong. Somebody ought to say that with me. In 2019, I plan on finishing strong. See, you ought to start the year strong, but you ought to want to finish the year strong. And however you start out, you got to continue and maintain from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. I want to close this year out finishing strong. I don't want the latter part of my year to be lesser than the start of my year. Help me. Listen, I know that you may not believe this, but I'm going to give it to you anyhow. Our destiny as a church is tied to your destiny. If you are a member of this church, our destiny it's tied to your destiny. Right. And if you don't want to go nowhere, you ain't helping us to get somewhere. Amen. 
If you don't want to be nothing, you ain't going to help your church to be something. Are y'all feeling me right here? When you look at where we are and what we are not and what we don't have, the question is, what are you? Who are you? And how are you helping us? Because if you don't have a right destiny and a righteous destiny and a God-given destiny, how do you expect your church to be any better than you are? <laughs> Somebody say, preach, Reverend Williams. That's all I've been trying to do for 30 years. Amen. as a church is tied to your dutifulness. If you are not dutiful in your duty, it affects our destiny as a church. Whatever ministry you serve it in, when you stop being dutiful, it keeps the church from achieving its destiny. We can't be a five-star church and you're a one-star member. Just a minute, let me stare at that Kool Aid. I tell you what, I think you've got it already. Our destiny as a church is tied to your diligence. If you are not diligent in the service of God, you are impacting the destiny of God's church. Amen. I put the word God right where it's supposed to be. Because this is God's church. I sat in this seat this morning. And I said, Lord, this is your church. It's always been your church. It's still your church right now. These are your people. I'm like Moses, Lord, these are your people. They may act, they may act ugly. They may mourn and complain and grumble carry on all kind of foolishness, but Lord, they your people. Yeah. 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 And then I said, Lord, I'm your preacher. Yeah. I'm your pastor. Yeah. I'm your shepherd yeah. over this congregation. Yeah. That's what I've been, and that's what I'm going to keep being yeah. until you say that's enough. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me right here? Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Our destiny as a church is tied to the people of God who love God and serve God being diligent in the things of God. As I said yesterday, if you are a person who is a half-hearted servant, don't expect your church to ever get past halfway. Because we can't rise no higher than you rise. We can't go no further than you are willing to go. To benefit the kingdom of God. Yes, Paul says we must always abound in the work of the Lord. Yes, that means we're aiming to do better or we're aiming to be better. Amen. That means it is our goal right. to surpass our previous record. I don't mean no harm, but uh, Ezekiel Elliott came into this year with something on his mind. And that was to surpass his last year's rushing record. Dak Prescott came into the season with one thing on his mind. To surpass, to go beyond the record I've already set. Right. Every person, regardless to where you are, yes. in terms of your career, your education, your relationships, and your religion, right. you ought to have an aim and desire to surpass what you did last year. If you came to Sunday school two times last year, you ought to say this year, I'm going to show up 12 times. 
Have I got a witness here? Whatever you did for the Lord yesterday, you ought to say I'm going to break my previous record. I led one song last year. I'm going to ask them, can I lead another song? So I'll have two songs under my belt this year. Good God Almighty, I prayed for somebody last year. But this year, I'm going to take the prayer list. And rather than praying for just one somebody whose name is on the prayer list, I'm going to add five more names to my prayer this week and then next week I'm going to flip it and pray for five more people and the next week I'm going to flip it and pray for five more people instead of just praying for one somebody I'm going to do more than what I did last year I'm getting ready to close here but I need to tell you, Brother Woods, we are not in competition with other believers. When Paul said, be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, he was not telling me to be in competition with nobody else. He wasn't telling me that when I sang, I ought to try to outsing you. When I give, I ought to try to outgive you. When I pray, it's not my intention to try to outpray you because I ain't talking to the people. I'm talking to God. And when you're in competition, you done left God out of the equation and focusing on yourself. When I preach, I'm not trying to outpreach Billy Taylor, Lee Williams III, or any of these other preachers I'm trying to fulfill my assignment and give it all that I have because I want to hear the Lord say well done is there anybody here who will tap your neighbor and say neighbor when I do what I do if not for your approval, if not for your applause, if not for your praise, but I'm thanking the Lord for one more chance. Is there anybody here who won't mind helping me to preach right here and say everything that I have, the Lord gave it to me. I'm not here for no monkey shine but I am here to let my little light shine is there anybody here who made up in your mind that I'm gonna let my little light shine Paul said you got to learn how to stay in the game if you're gonna stay in the game you gotta sacrifice if you're gonna stay in the game, you gotta be committed. If you're gonna stay in the game, you got to be enthusiastic. I wish I had somebody who don't mind showing your enthusiasm. If you were at the Spurs game, you'd be enthusiastic. If you were at a football game, you would be enthusiastic. If you were watching the haves and the have-nots, you'd be enthusiastic. If you were watching Murder, She Wrote, if you were watching Law and Order, CSI, you'd be enthusiastic. If you were watching Jeff Comedy Jam, you would be enthusiastic. But you come in the God's house and sit here like a bump on the log. Never really rock, never move anything, never wave your hand. 
Open your mouth. 